Hey, a pleasant good Sunday morning, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Boric, and a pleasant special thanks to those of you that have subscribed this far. If you enjoy the content, please continue to hit the sub button down below. Really love and appreciate you for it. But this is going to be a quick video on the St. Louis Blues, who are streaking at home, even with their goaltenders out, Jordan Bennington on the COVID list, Billy Huso with an injury, Charlie Lindgren, who's been a hell of an AHL goaltender, now has got a chance to prove himself again for the first time since his time in the Montreal organization, and has done so in back-to-back -back games, having great back-to-back -back games, as the St. Louis Blues were able to capture another victory, this time, last time against Detroit, this time 4-1 to one against the Montreal Canadiens. Obviously, the Canadiens have been sputtering, but they took advantage of a team they should take advantage of, and won their seventh straight at home, and have been playing amazing for their home crowd. That really, obviously, is one of the better <clears throat> places we saw it during the run to the Stanley Cup, but they won how loud and how energized that crowd can get, and is one of the better places to play. But let's look at their overall team. Obviously, they're led by their captain, Ryan O'Reilly, who's having a good season himself in 23 games, 16 points, great on the defensive end. Uh, then they have Pavel Buzinevich, who's having a career year, also a plus 12, the best plus minus on the team. Uh, Buzinevich is not a player coming into the season because of his two-way play that you would expect to have the best plus minus on a team. Ivan Barbashev having a hell of a season, 19 points, and then Vladimir Tarasenko. That whole second line of Buznevich, Barbashev, and Tarasenko is ridiculous because Tarasenko has also returned to form, which is what leads to this team being so great at home. Uh, Jordan Cairo also breakout season, picked 35th overall in 16. It's taken him a little bit to get to this point, but now it looks like he's developing into a stud. And then Brandon Saad is, of course, the experienced, wise veteran, along with Ryan O'Reilly, that's there, and Braden Shen, who is down on the third line, who's having a solid season four and four for him. And then they also just kind of have, um, Barubi seems to be one of those coaches that kind of just has with his system, anybody that can come in, like, for example, Nathan Walker in two games, three goals, absolutely killing it, a guy that's a former pick of the Washington Capitals, where anybody that kind of comes in here does well. Logan Brown, five points now, um, heating up with the Blues, seemingly finding himself there. I did a video on that earlier a few days ago, and I'll link that at the end here if you want to watch that, because it does seem like Logan Brown has discovered himself there now with the halo of being the top pick out over his head, getting moved on from Ottawa. It seems like that's doing him wonders, and of course, this Blues team always runs an efficient defense the way that Barubi played. They want to pl they always play a more in-your-face, frustrating style, and that is how they are able to drive their offense as well. Scott Perunovic is playing very well, drafted 45th and 18. Robert Bertuzzo, who they acquired in a trade, obviously playing very well as well. Tori Krug is obviously, you just expect him to play well, along with Marco Scandella. That's honestly probably their best defensive line, even though Mikola and Paranko's together. Paranko is their best potentially quote-unquote best defenseman in terms of both sides of the equation, but I wouldn't put him and Mikola necessarily as the best defensive line. I would say it's actually Scandella and Krug, but they have, have been having great goaltending this year, no matter who it is. Charlie Lingman in three games of a 1-4-3, 9-4-7, he's been lighting up the world. John Gillies, who was very good in his PTO game uh, with the Lehigh Valley Phantoms against the Bridgeport Islanders and has had a hell of an AHL career himself, uh, now gets an opportunity again, potentially, depending when Jordan Bennington comes back. But Lindgren definitely is making a name for himself, a 6'1", 182-pounder. Charlie Lindgren, at 27 years old, has been very good in the AHL, and he's a huge reason why this team in those three games is able to stay pace and also able to keep this seven game and the streak going at home. The only issue for the St. Louis Blues is they need to get going on the road. While winning seven straight at home, they've lost six, yes, six straight on the road. So it's been a balancing out act that's not going to help you move up the standings. But the Blues are in a good spot now. It's all about them just moving up as we're at the quarter-ish report, as this is also going to be that on the St. Louis Blues, since I did review their team, this is going to be my edition of the quarter-ish report for their team as well. But they have six straight losses on the road right now as we do this report, seven straight wins at home. So the key for the Blues being one of the to be one of the most dangerous teams in the NHL, I should say, is get it going on the road. Because if they get it going on the road in just a couple games over 500, if they keep this great historic home rate, then 
they're still going to be one of the better teams and one of the best teams in the league. It's all just about being better than 500 and better than being terrible on the road of late in the last six. So I hope everybody enjoyed this mid, well, actually quarterly um, recap on the St. Louis Blues as the Blues are streaking at home but struggling on the road at this quarter-ish since teams are between like 25 to 30 games right now, some a little less due to COVID, quarter-ish mark. So peace out, everybody. Stay safe and enjoy the rest of the season. Blues fans, best of luck to you and Greg Berube as you strive for another Stanley Cup.